when you see Nikola Jokic play and what he's done the last three years, especially in the playoffs this year in the NBA Finals, any similarities between the two of them, Nikola Jokic and the great Arvita Sabonis? First of all, oh, my God, I, I love watching him play. I mean, I love Arvita Sabonis. Uh, I loved coaching him. Uh, he was a dream. Um, you know, he, he was a guy that um, what you could really tell people about him is, like, you can count on him every night, and the nights that he is supposed to win, he wins. And the nights that are 50-50s, you know, where you feel like against Shaq or – Tim Duncan, you know, you pick these, pick these, you know, Hall of Famers that he has to go up against. You know, he's going to win some of those nights too. But the nights that he was supposed to win, like, you know, you could, you could just go feed him, you know, feed the monkey because he <laughs> will, he will score and he will wear you out. And uh, you know, and, and 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 he was a great passer. You know, he did all the things. But um, you know, the Joker takes it to another level. Uh, I love watching him play and. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, I thought it was incredible. Um, you know, I mean, one of the things, and I, and I think he's an amazing guy and really smart. And, and because I'm out of the league, I can probably say this. I can't believe he was the last guy picked in the All-Star game. I mean, that was yeah. just ridiculous. And then yeah. when, the, when the media tried to bait him into that and said, oh, you know, you know, what do you think about that? He goes, yeah, I would have picked me last two. Totally diffused it, perfect. You know what, hey, hey screw you guys. I'm just going to go about working about what I want to do and win a championship. And I, I thought their team was the greatest. You know, their their celebration after the NBA Finals was one of the most pleasurable things to watch because you could really see those guys cared about each other and loved each other and were totally – they were all in for each other. And uh, I, I thought it was amazing. Do you think that has a lot to do with Nikola Jokic's personality? Because it seems like in teams that I've been a part of, like the best player's personality kind of resonates throughout the team. I think that's very much a part of it. You know, I mean, again, I've, I, I was very fortunate, you know, virtually to play, you know, playoffs every year of my career. And, and uh, you know, the, the best when the best player on your team, uh, a Sidney Moncrief, a Magic Johnson – when those guys are also the guys that are out there working harder than anybody every day. I used to tell, you know, as a rookie coach with the Lakers and having Magic Johnson, like, you know, like I was, I, I probably played him too many minutes at times, like just making sure I got a win when everybody else is sitting there saying, dude, the game's over, get the guy out, right? And then my, my way of, um, you know, my load management when I coach was, hey, I'm giving you practice off the next day. Like, so I come in and say, Irvin, hey, I played too many minutes last night. You know, by a couple. You know, you'll play two, three, four minutes, too many minutes. Um, hey, um, you know, like, after we go through this, why don't you just sit down, you know, and, and he goes, Coach, if I sit down, then these guys are going to think they've got a day off too. I mean, that was the attitude and, and you know, I mean, and the mindset. Um, and when you have that, I mean, it's, it, it, it makes coaching so much easier. I don't want to bring up a painful memory, but I always think about great teams that didn't win. And your Portland team in 2000, mm -hmm. you get to a Game 7 against the Lakers, which was obviously a great team. Does that one maybe still bother you a little bit? Just that It's not, not, not that it was anybody's fault. You lost to a great team. But you must have felt like the team that you had in Portland that year was championship worthy, right? It was. You know, what's funny is that I love that game. Um, I go back and I've seen that game and um, I'll tell you, uh, you know, for me, you know, obviously we were down three, one to those guys and we went to LA and we beat them in LA and then we went back to Portland and we beat them in Portland. I don't know if you remember at the end of that game, uh, Rick Fox and I got into it. There was a scuffle down the end of my bench and we were jawing at each other and immediately comes like, Hey, what were you and Rick talking about? I said, yeah, I, was, I said, I'm going to be in Santa Monica, uh, you know, on Thursday. Where should I go eat? <laughs> yeah, you know, and then uh, the game seven, you know, when we had that, we, we obviously we played, we played terrific. And we had this, you know, I think it was 13 point lead going to the fourth quarter. And I had this one decision to make. And, uh, and if I didn't make this decision, I would be, I, I, might, I don't know how it would have bothered me forever. You know, we had this, we had a lead and I had a decision to take Rashid out and rest Rashid or not take him out, you know, and I decided to take him out. And um, he sat there, and he got, he got his rest, and 
came back into the game with a double-digit lead, okay? And then Rashid had like 30 in the game. Steve Smith had 30 in the game. We missed 13 straight shots. I remember. And of the 13, and of the 13 11 of them were great, and two of them were good. One was a 20-footer open by Scott. You know, and he, was, he wasn't a you know, great long-range shooter, but he was, he was okay, Hall of Famer. And, um, and so four of those are by, you know, Rasheed, or four are by Steve Smith that were in and out or good looks that, that, you know, that we didn't make. But the thing is, it always bothered me when people said, oh, that, those guys choked. I'm like, those, forget those guys. What, are you talking, what is choking? We had one turnover in the fourth quarter, and we had no bad shots. We had one missed defensive rotation, was when Rasheed came back into the game, and it was when um, I think it was Brian Shaw hit a three-pointer from a corner. And then the other thing was before the series started, people were like, well, what are you worried about in this series? I said, I'm worried about, like, they're veteran guys, not Kobe and not Shaq. I know what those guys are going to do. Well, sure enough, you know, during that stretch, Brian Shaw banked in a three-pointer from straight away, and, you know, yeah. then he made another. I mean, anyway, it, it's what happened. So to answer the question, it was a great game, and, um, you know, we felt the winner of that game was going to win the, the championship, uh, and they did. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what happened.